All right, so Athlon Sports gave us a little bit of a gift. They predicted who is going to be the top three finishers of the whole roster, but we're only going to go over the top three today. Who are going to be the top three finishers in the AC from the Coastal and Atlantic side? We had the conversation with AJ Black, but it's always good to get multiple perspectives. Jersey Drake is in the building for Freestyle Friday. Let's do it. On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked On ACC. I'm your host, Candace Cooper. Got my Friday sidekick, Drizzy Drake, in the building from Locked On Seminoles. And as a reminder, it is the summer, so we're only going three episodes a week. For some of y'all, you're like, hell yeah, less Candace. For other people, y'all are crying in the bed. Either way it goes, we're good. Like, as long as you listen, right? As long as you listen. We're going to talk a little bit about ACC football. It's been the kind of the conversation throughout the week. And of course, if you missed AJ Black's episode where we predicted where some of our Atlantic and Coastal Atlantic and Coastal teams would finish, we have a little Athlon Sports list here that we're only going to go over the top three for each. But more importantly, next week, I'm going to give you guys a full rundown of each, each team's profile, where I think there are some hits, what are some misses, maybe three to four things. I think are going to be keys for this program for those programs as they try and chase an ACC title and they chase down Pitt, the defending ACC champions. So sounds good, sounds great. Let's get into it, Jizzy Drake. How we feeling on this Friday? We're feeling good, Candace. We're just chilling over here. It's Friday. I'm about to drive up to Orlando. I got a baby shower to be at for one of my friends. He's got a, he's having a beautiful baby boy, Jackson Wayne Smith. Can't wait to meet him. I was gonna be my oh, future let's nephew. Put the whole government, yeah, uh, yeah. I, listen, man, that's my boy right there. That was the wedding I went to last um uh, last fall, and that was the one you were asking me about, like how you gonna be, how wild you gonna be for St. Augustine. So like that was how gonna be does a, he already have a baby on the way, or was that already in the mix? No, I think it was like shortly thereafter. Mm-hmm. There's something in the water right now. Like I have four sorority sisters who are pregnant, my line sisters. And then I have two cousins and another family friend who's pregnant. And I'm just like, what's everybody drinking? I don't need any of it. Thank you. Nah, yeah, you keep that away from me too. I honestly, like, right. I'm, I'm good for right now. I'm just trying to make sure I have enough money for some food there, real quick. But uh, no, I'm, it's good to Period. be here for the weekend and everything else. And I mean, it's also great to be back with uh, Florida State's number one hater out on the timeline. Number one, like I didn't know how much Florida State went hard in the paint for each other until people thought assumed I, Candace Cooper, was a hater. I'm like, do you know where I'm from? I FSU is an afterthought for me. I'm gonna keep it a band. Like I don't live in that Florida bubble. I don't get all that stuff. And like for you, that's your culture. That's what you grew up around. Like all that kind of stuff. Over here, this is Tar Heel country. Like let's let's just be real. I love my heels, and it's everybody else. It's really funny because typically I was a lot meaner than you were at the beginning. <laughs> And I'm saying, and I've never, I have not seen one negative Drake comment. I love see people be like, girl, oh, yeah. I get enough of those. I get right. enough of those. No. I get enough of those straight to the damn source. Okay. You should see my <laughs> Twitter. You should see the reviews on our thing, our comments too. Also folks, I am trying to work on myself talking a little bit slower, but Hey, that's a speech therapy coming out of me, my guy. Oh, you're good to go. I'm working on having good audio and good video. So, hey, we all have our we thing. We are here. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, again, we mentioned Athlon Sports gave us quite the list as we're trying to figure out who is the best and worst of them in the ACC. So we're going to talk about the Atlantic first. Again, if you missed AJ Black's show from Locked On Boston College, you missed a good one. So he has a list that I'll re-go over when I give player pro when I give team profiles. But for right now, Athlon, let's go over the Atlantic division. So number three. They had Wake Forest finishing in this 2022 season. And I sit here to say, how much do we really feel like Sam Hartman and company are going to repeat the magic that they did last go round? It's interesting because I know A.T. Perry came out and became the sort of superstar, right? But mm-hmm. could that part of that be because Ja'Cory Roberson was actually getting a lot more attention because we all were saying how great of a wide receiver he is? Mm. And I know they kept Taylor Moore in there, too. Like, that kid, I mean, we discussed like, out of nausea. And like, I mean, that kid's going to be Wes Walker. That kid's going to be Braxton Barrett. That kid's going to be a solid wide receiver in the slot. But, like, defensively, that team was bad. Like, that team was really, really bad and just got run up on each and every single damn day. I mean, after the amount of overs I took, I mean, they didn't give up, like, 40-something points to Army. Yes. And I really was about to pull up uh, ending stats because I want to say they were like one of the bottom tier when it came to defense in the ACC. So I just, I think that, I don't know how much exponentially better it's gotten or going to get, 
But I will say one thing's certain, two things for sure. Mr. Clausen has some of the best executed plays in well, not plays. He's a really good coach. <laughs> well, yes, too. Best executed teams in terms of not turning the ball over and making you mess up, right? They're going to capitalize on your mistakes. And so I think that's one of the biggest things that's in favor for Wake Forest because they play really sound ball. They're not they're not going to give it to you. So I think the more the question is like, because I know AJ had them, I guess, as number one in his ACC Atlantic rankings. Um, mm -hmm. I think with Wig, it's just like, do we think that Sam yeah, is number two? Sorry, number two. Like, okay. do you think that Wake Forest can actually take this? Like, not sorry, Wake Forest. Do you think Sam Hartman will take another step forward, or do you think last year was his ceiling? Because he did throw the ball, I think, one of the, I think it was top five in most attempts in the country last year. Yeah. So, like, do we actually think that he's going to be able to replicate his numbers, rep replicate, replicate the season he had? Cause, like, he was, he was dynamite all year. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, when you look at, um, his mental toughness definitely grew, right? Exponentially better than it was, but still has room for improvement. So I think that's also something where, you know, if you can get over the mental hurdle of, I don't want to say choking in the ACC championship, but just not having the probably into the year that you won, of course, because you didn't win, they're pretty much good to go. No, we got <sighs> nothing else. All right. I mean, with weight, I just, it's. <laughs> I just can't get behind a team that like their defense was so bad. And okay. I think, I mean, I pushed them. I mean, I, I took them in a lot of games because they scored a lot of points is more that they also lost two of their running backs. So who's going to fill up those roles. They also lost Zach Tom, who I think would have was probably one of the more underrated linemen in the draft. So I think three is a good spot for them here, but it's mainly because who else in the Atlantic below them? Are you afraid of at all period? Because like the quarterback, Sam Hartman is top three, top four, probably. In the, in the conference as a whole. And we are the conference quarterbacks, too, anyways. That's very fair. All right, so Wake Forest, number three. And then you got number two, NC State, according to Athlon Sports. Sorry, I almost gave away number one, but here we are. You know, I'm pretty. NC State getting number two spot, even though that they are bringing all of the heat. They want all the smoke. They didn't get their bowl game. Holiday, holiday bowl got canceled. They've just had, you know, woe is me mentality when it comes to certain cer certain things, like especially against the NCAA. I can't not go for them. Something something about it is saying I have to go hard and paint for NC State this season. I just think they're going to do it. I mean, they're built for it. I yeah. mean, it's the only thing that's going to hold them back is whether or not Dave Doran's ceiling is nine wins. And I think that this will be the year that they can finally show it off because – I mean, Devin Leary is back. Devin Leary does not mess up, period. He's yeah. extremely accurate. And the only time he throws a pick, you're just like, he never does that. And yeah. then when the defense as a whole, Corey Durden comes back and all ACC defensive linemen like, across the front, like that's a team that you want to keep. And then people forget that Cyrus Fagan got hurt and he was a starting safety and he was playing out of his mind. So to me, overall, like this is definitely the team to beat. And quite honestly, I know that we're all, it's real. I really hate how every single host and even like you know social media accounts like Big Game Boomer thing has them as a, as a CFB potential uh, playoff participant. I hate going with this, but it's like everyone right now is feeling that this, this NC State team can finally do it. And to me, this is the number one team in the ACC. And quite, if you have any lower than two, I just don't judge. Just, I just don't uh, you know trust your judgment. So you remember how last season everyone blew the smoke up of UNC and it was like, they're so good, they're so good, they're going to be so great, Sam Howell, right? Cool. Mm -hmm. cool. So you see how this season everyone's like, NC State, NC State, NC State, NC State. The only difference is NC State has actually proven they can get nine wins, right? They've proven that yeah. they've been in some tough matchups and got over the hill. North Carolina is the one who struggles against the easy gimmies, like no offense, but the Florida States and their down years. We'll call it down years, right? They're not we'll stellar that. years. Okay. Mm -hmm. The fact that you get Molly Watt by Jordan Travis and company, that's that's saying something. Twice. And, so. <laughs> and you have NC State who drops stuff like to Miami, but Tyler Van Dyke is definitely one of the best kept secrets here in our conference. So me, as much as people say, oh, well, the same way in North Carolina got hype, will NC State get the same hype? I'm like, they can they are still getting the same hype, but I actually feel like they'll deliver on said hype. I didn't feel that way with UNC. I told AJ to be a little more hesitant. He didn't believe me, but he found out quick. Okay. None, none so. of us believed you. Like, <laughs> like I think every single one of one of us when we had the round table, like all UNC, I think it was just you being the pessimistic fan you are. Then Ken was like, I don't know what everyone's talking about. And Max did the same thing on our show, where it's like, <laughs> and I think it's also gonna show because one, Dave Doran's a better coach. Yeah. But also whenever we Ooh. said UNC UNC were like like oh Sam uh, Sam Howell this Sam Howell that when people talk about NC State 
they talk about multiple players on that team, not Heck. just the one. And I know they lost lost Ike McQuanu, but that defense is still pretty stout. Devin Leary is still there. And overall, like that's going to be a team that, quite frankly, that's not UNC. Um, and yeah. I think the 10 went to ending their schedule actually is probably a little bit easier than people uh, actually assume it is. Okay, that's like two shots that you can see today that I'm gonna let you have because you talk about Mac Brown, and I just don't that don't I don't go for that on this show. But I will say at every chance I get that the New York Giants definitely drafted two of the offensive linemen. So take that for what you will. Any NFC East Great fans. Draft. Great overall. <laughs> BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your sports betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, including the basketball championship matchup, Celtics, Warriors, got NHL hockey, got a little Tampa Bay, a little bit of uh, New York Rangers, and more. The Avalanche is looking real good, though. Okay, trying to tell you. Major League Baseball and, of course, all of the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering and live betting, esports, and so much more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action at betonline.ag. BetOnline is where the game starts. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Save time and money when using Rock Auto with why choose to spend 30 to 50% or even more on the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use page. Right, go explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solution for your auto part needs. Go to Rock Auto right now. Typed in, how did you hear about us, box? So they know we sent you amazing low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. Please visit Rock Auto. Jersey Drake, Locked on Seminoles podcast. Always making a do what to do on a Friday. We're going over the Athlon Sports top three rankings when it comes to the Atlantic and the Coastal Division. But before we do, Celtics, Warriors, I'm just saying, Jason Tatum, former Duke star, it's on the tear right now. Feeling good, feeling great. Boston might go up 3-1. Jason Tatum is really, really damn good. Draymond yeah. Green played terribly. Um, yeah. And aside from that, I'm not going to succeed and say anything nice about Boston. Um, <laughs> the head coach is dope. Um, love his right. wife. Go Nia team. Long. Okay. Shout out to NBA on ESPN who said Nia Young. I was like, you know, I understand you had to delete the tweet, but my girl is aging like fine wine, so I ain't even mad at you. You're going to get they me told my girlfriend, you know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to say a 50-year-old woman is fine and still getting this shoe. I hope somebody said that about me when I'm 55. And I'm 50. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, but I don't want to get you in trouble. Let me change the subject because I was also going to start talking about Nelly, and I might get in trouble. So let's get I was back. Like, you might get in trouble about that one. <laughs> let's yeah, get Nelly, back Nelly to Nelly some. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the number one Atlantic team, the number one team to come out of the Atlantic will be Clemson, according to Athlon Sports. I gave it away a little bit earlier. Apologies there. But the Tigers, you know, they're going to be back better than ever. It's going to be whether or not Dabo can let those coaches do their thing. Sometimes you just got to know when to let them let roll, and hopefully Dabo can do just that. But to me, Dabo is not the issue. It really is DJ. I mean, he was one of the worst quarterbacks in a really good quarterback conference where we're always ready to brag about a quarterback in our conference, and he wasn't on the list by a mile. Yeah, did you know he threw more, no, more picks than TDs last year? <laughs> I didn't know that. I knew no, he was I bad, but my man, that was just – and he, he, what's even worse <laughs> is that you saw his first season when he, you know, replaced Trevor because of the COVID issues. And I'm like, Ooh. yo, this kid's nice. And yeah. then last year was like, what the hell is this? Right. Because overall, you have no idea what the hell is going on with the kid. And K Klubnik is nice too. Like K Klubnik mm-hmm. has all the potential in the world. I am going to disagree with you a little bit with the Dabo thing because typically – it's interesting when coaches leave like a Brent Venables or Antonio mm-hmm. Elliott and the year before, I think Jeff Scott and at a premier program, you replace them with bigger names. I know Juwan Sider, the Penn state uh, running backs coach was looking for a new job, not a new job, but he was looking for opportunities out there to be, you know, an offensive play caller. Mm-hmm. But most of his replacements have been internally and yeah. people with not that much experience. Typically you, a coach of his caliber at a program that spends a lot of money on football would be more big game hunting. So to me, it seems more that he's going to probably surround himself a lot more people that are, I guess, not, I'm going to say yes men, but like people or individuals that will allow Dabo to run what he wants to do. And if you look at Clemson's first three years under his, uh, under his tenure, they did that and they were not successful. So maybe, 
I think Dabo is still going to be, you know, micromanaging a little too much, too much overall. And that honestly might be, you know, the beginning, not the beginning of the end, but the beginning of the end of Clemson's dominance, you know, as we've seen the past few years. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I wouldn't mind Clemson being back on center stage only because it lifts the ACC, right? I still think that they are the team that needs to do well for people to not talk down on the conference. So if they're, you know, ripping and running, makes for better for NC State's case towards college football playoffs. It makes for better conversation for Wake Forest to be a top 10 program, all of those things, right? So I think it just ultimately helps the program in general, not conference in general. Now on the flip side, you got the Coastal barely hanging on, but according to Athlon Sports, North Carolina is going to be the top three finisher, number sitting at number three in the Coastal Division. Who, buddy? I Okay. Matt Brown is back. <laughs> Jay Bateman is gone. Josh Downs is still there. Who's going to be the one who throws it to him? Great question. And is he going to have to do too much? So, you know, I haven't gone through my specific player profiles, all those kind of things yet, but my fear is that they're going to call too much on Josh Downs the same way they did on Sam Howell, and it's going to be like, hey, be the hero. And that's how you get hurt. That's how you get up every play and you like your back broke. I'm worried. I'm a little bit worried. Is UNC being placed at three just make more base, basically giving UNC the benefit of the doubt for the past few years, or is it more of an indictment of all the teams that are below them <laughs> on this list? Because I know I think a majority of them yes. have new head coaches yes. with Virginia Tech, Virginia. Georgia Tech's coach is about to get fired, so it's going to be a new coach anyways. And then you have Duke down there with Mike Elko. Like, this, I mean, with Jacoby Cruz. Mike Elko's and winning Manning. six games. Mike's El- just so we all know here, if you haven't been listening to our show, if you're not a faithful listener, Kenton Gibbs and I have a bet that Duke will win six games this season. You can go ahead and look up the on, schedule. I, I do, I, you can I, I do want to get on that bet, though. We'll <laughs> talk about that later. But, like, overall, though, like, besides Josh Downs, like, is there anybody on this team that you kind of have faith in kind of like being a captain or a leader and kind of helping you push towards that top three spot? I think British Brooks is going to be great in the run game. I think he's going to be one of those instant leaders. I think Ray, Raymond Hassock on the defensive side is certainly going to be a de- defensive leader. He's kind of learned, you know, from Jeremiah Gimmel and all those things, but in Chasserat rather, I don't, I just, you know, Kamari Morales, I think is good, but when you, I think the positive is Ches, Chesnick is there. Chesnick, 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 Ches, Chesnick, that too. Chesnick. I, got you. <laughs> I think that Gene is a great addition to the defense. We were what top ten defense in the country when he was there. Now it's going to be about can he reinvent the wheel in the sense of getting those guys motivated? Because what I know from a birdie telling me. They weren't that motivated with Bateman. They didn't respect him. He had a little Napoleon complex being a short man. All that energy was there. So (laughs) hopefully (laughs) things get a little bit better now that he's gone. But you also got my guy, uh, Jaquarius Connolly. I think he's going to be excellent. He's a young gunner. Then you got Tony Grimes in the secondary. I'm about to ask. That kid is good. That (laughs) kid's Him and Storm Duck. Hopefully Storm is nice and healthy and we'll be good to go. So boom, shakalaka. I mean, shout out to all the uh, short kings out there, and shout out to Jay Bateman heading over to the University of Florida, the Swamp Town <laughs> over there, and being their uh, linebacking coach because, oh, buddy, I can't. Good wait luck, good <laughs> luck. Can be a, is that going to be a dub? Actually, let me not talk about wins and losses for Florida State because I can. I don't. I don't want anyone to get in their panties. Get their panties in a bunch. Number two, we had <clears throat> for the Coastal Pit taking their talents to not be the defending champs, but rather finish a second place. In their own division, Pat Narduzzi, are you buying the juice? Is Narduzzi juice? Are we drinking it good? Or are we still like? Eh, I don't know. He's a better coach than I gave him credit for last year. Um, verbatim, I called him last year at Plant because he's basically <laughs> that coach you know who's a coach, but like you don't know exactly where he is. But he's just like he's just mm-hmm. he's just there. And he showed last year he actually is very great at coordinating defenses overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, the faith he instilled in you know Kenny Pickett after you know very. I'm not going to say pedestrian, but slightly above average career actually at Pitt before his his Heisman campaign last year. Uh, Are you excited about him being a Steeler? Got to money because it don't sound like it. <laughs> Ma'am, I told you this two weeks ago. I am not. Um, over, And I ha- have him, Mr. Trubisky, and uh, Mason Ooh. Rudolph in the QB room. Please, Lord, help me. Um, But overall, like, I mean, with Pitt, I was a huge fan of Keaton Slovis two years mm-hmm. ago, and then he just got hit by the injury bug overall. I felt yeah. like every single QB actually in that USC room, whether it be him, Jackson Dart, or JT Daniels, was always hurt. 
And with Keaton Slovis, he no, he no longer has Jordan Addison. Uh, I kind of want to see which wide receiver overall steps up. But you know the defense is always going to be fine. And the Coastal, like we said before, the Coastal is not particularly strong from top to bottom. I mean, it's yeah. very top-heavy with the top three that we're listing right now, and especially the next thing we, we got coming up, even though I got a few um, true serum stuff I need to talk, talk to uh, the Miami fans about. Ooh, well, speaking of, number one spot in the Coastal is going to the U. The U is back. Thank you for everyone who listened to that most recent show. Feeling good about it. I understand if you're watching on YouTube, Drizzy Drake doesn't feel the same. However, I appreciate all the fans that just take two minutes to look at my lovely face while I do my spiel and keep it pushing. So, say all that to say, go Canes? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Never. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I do think Miami is going to be fun again. Like we can, we can have positive. They're going to be fun. It's going to make for better. Again, when ACC does good, we do good. More people want to listen to the show. So we're like, we're hyping up the ACC here. We're hyping up our top teams. I'm ready to have a strong conversation. And then we can always have Alex Donald's on the show, which means we're going to have at least 4,000 views because that's my buddy be doing it. Okay. But that man's been crushing radio down here in South Florida for a while. I know. I remember he got, I think he was in the Miami New Times for sports radio. I'm like, damn, this dude's raw. And I'm like, oh, damn, nice part of the network. That's awesome. Yeah. But with Miami overall, like, look, their hire of Mario Cristobal was awesome. Also, I think it was you and I, we actually said that back in the first week of November that Diaz was going to get fired. And I said specifically that Cristobal would be the new head coach. So, point for me, y'all, you're welcome. But then also, I think what's more not talked about is the hire of Josh Gass who was the mm-hmm. offensive coordinator over at University of Michigan. Yeah. That, that dude is so damn good at his job, and that dude is going to be a very, very good head coach someday. Quite honestly, I would love to see him actually in Garnet and Gold, actually, you know, in a few years from now. But he is someone that is going to be able to be the other um, voice in Cristobal's ear because one of the big concerns is Cristobal didn't really manage or game plan very well around Justin Herbert. Mm-hmm. The amount of Q powers that man ran, was a little bit more on the higher side. And now you see what Justin Herbert does when you just let him be fun and himself in the pocket. Um, yeah. My only concern for Miami, and it should be their concern too, is the defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele. Kevin Steele was the great defensive coordinator 10 to 15 years ago yeah. uh, when he was at Clemson and then over at Auburn. And from all reports right now, the defensive line and Labang core, aside for Letter Taylor, isn't performing particularly well. And I said this last week where they're just basically it's, it's a lot, a lot of work that needs to be done, but they do have two great safeties in James Williams and Devontae Williams. Like, the Williams is right there. So this team is going to be really good. Just We'll just see how Ty Van Dyke throws the ball because Charleston Rambo has gone. So you all yeah. need someone to step up in that receiving core. I love how you like to give feedback in a very much, I do want to talk junk, but I'm going to be nice about it. But like also, just so you know, don't don't get it twisted. It's a family show. If they re- if they really want to talk junk, they know my Twitter is like listed down here. at Tally underscore underscore Drake. Like, Trust me, I have no problem saying nice things about when you deserve it, but uh, hey, yeah. it's always hard for you when you need to. Don't you just love a chewy chocolatey brownie? What about caramel brownie and caramel swirl on top? So freaking good. What if I told you that all you have to do is go to built.com right now because they are available, those caramel brownie bars. And you got to act fast, though, because they're a fan favorite. Forget about dessert. Make sure you get that 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, 4 grams of sugar, delicious treat, and built caramel brownie bar. It is delicious, but it also is healthy, which is 100% covered in real chocolate, but delicious to the down to the last bite. Go to build.com and use promo code LOCK15 and you get 15% off your order. So we're finished up the show here. We've got the top three from the Atlantic and the Coastal. But Jersey Drake. If you had to pick one of those six, who's winning the ACC? I probably am honestly going to go with Clemson. And Ooh, I know it's a so lot. boring. Bo- I know. And picking NC State like everyone <laughs> and their mama right now is being boring. Ooh, but, okay. I, but I potentially think that Clemson makes the QB change extremely early in the year with Kate Klubnick. And mm-hmm. one of the big things with the freshman QB is there's not a lot of tape on him out there in the college level. Yep. And it takes a lot of time to adjust. It's similar to whenever you have a pitching prospect come up in baseball. Yep. So to me, NC State, until they win 10 games, until they don't put their foot in their mouth, um, basically I need to, I need them to show it to me first before I can pick them. Um, and the second best, yep. honestly, would probably be them because I'm never picking Miami to win one until they've been in the conference for how many years, Candace? 17? It's been 18? a good minute. Yeah, it's been a yeah. good minute. And they haven't won anything. So 2000, I believe. Um, I'm going to go today here on July. What is it? June 9th. 
Pitt, why not? I think that Narduz is going to head and go ahead and repeat. I think uh, Keaton Slovis is going to do the damn thing. I think he's just going to be a uh, pick him up and right where you want him. I think the Atlantic is going to eat itself up and spit itself out. And, you know, why not Pitt? Pitt Panthers. Hail Pitt. Which as one, of today. <laughs> which one of the teams that are not in the top three do you actually see but potentially finishing in number three and number two? I think UVA is going to do a lot better than people think. I think Brendan Armstrong Rich. is great. I think Tony Elliott needed to break away, and I think he's going to be scary good with his own program. I think he's the best kept secret in the ACC. I agree with that. I think Brandon Armstrong, I think when we listed, had Malik one, Brendan two, and then Tyler Van Dyke three, because I think Brandon Armstrong, people like people are dismissing him because of Bronco Mendenhall. I'm like, well, I mean, if you actually watch the game, that man is super athletic and super and has a great arm strength. Bron- that Bronco Mendenhall didn't give him that. So I think yeah. UVA is going to shock a lot of people, and also their schedule is easy as hell. Their schedule is is not not anything hard yeah. at all. And like I think Boston College is another one. I think it's in the team with yep. uh, Fredrikovic too. I think I was surprised they had him at five. I'm like, I know their offensive linemen are gone, but Phil is still there, a fully healthy yeah. Fredrikovic, and Listen, Zay Flowers ain't going nowhere. I'm trying to tell you here, as much as people want to be haters, Duke is going to have a better season than people think. I'm on the Duke football train. I'm sorry. Right, I am. Okay. But wrap up the show. Okay, got it. Got it. No, um, no, no. <laughs> no, we're gonna put some money on this. No, we're doing this right now. Okay. How much money? Okay. You, you got six wins. Okay. Six so, wins. Six wins. And so if they don't make six wins, uh, what do you want to put on it? I'll give you one hundred dollars. Oh, we can do that. Damn. All right. Cool. One hundred <laughs> bucks. One hundred bucks for six wins, Duke. If you're listening, locked on Blue Devils, JJ Jackson. Listen, if you guys ever loved me, you would put all in and get your butts to Wallace Wade Stadium this fall so I can get 100 bones. But, yes, I'm I'm here for it. So we're good to go. Period. Yeah, it ain't happening. I'm just thinking what we're going to do with $100 now. Wow. Famous last words, says the man oh, yeah. who. Okay. Okay, have I lost a bet to you once? Have I lost a bet to you once? Hey, that's, law, that's the loss of, that's law of averages. I'm bound to win one sometime. Yeah, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm, quick, I'm quick with the Venmo. So say all I had to say. Teams, I don't know who's going to finish last Syracuse, and that's so unfortunate because you know how I feel about Babers. But, yeah, you know, it is what it is. I still think Florida State's going to get uh, – never mind. Let me go ahead and end the show. Thank you guys for your time. Jersey Dre, where can you find – where can people find you, follow your work? You can follow me at Tally underscore underscore Dre. You can follow my co-host Max Moody at Max Moody 17 Follow the podcast at Knowles Anonymous, basically where we engage with fans, do our mandatory mailbag Mondays, and also – we just dropped a, a, a uh, FSU LSU preview with Caroline Fenton of Locked On LSU. That was a great time. We're talking about Brian Kelly, her time there. She covered the team with Coach O. And also, folks, FSU is going to finish third in the Atlantic. Just what you watch. Coach Ogeron. Okay, anyway. The Etouffee right, okay. Ogre, if you will. <laughs> Not the Etouffee Ogre. All right, y'all. Have a great and safe weekend. I know I would say y'all, you know, crunk, have a good time, but inflation is real. So make sure you budget, okay? The $100 is going to mean a lot to me in a couple of weeks. So. Tell us, Sam. Hope y'all have fun. For Kenneth Cooper and Jizzy Drake, until next time.